The art trade can be big business, just ask former CBC host Evan Solomon. Paintings can be sold for millions of dollars, with some going for more than $100 million. The value of art is enticing for some people, with knowledge and skill leading them to actually create convincing forgeries. Yeah, forgery is a serious problem in the art world. Some saying fakes are more common than we may think. Now, it's tough to hammer down an actual number, but some experts say that perhaps 20% of paintings held by major museums may not be authentic. Do you have one? Well, joining us now to explain the dark side of the art world is Devin Terrian. He's the adjunct curator of European art at the Art Gallery of Hamilton. So, Devin, how serious is this problem of forgeries in the art world? Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a serious problem, and as curators and art historians and specialists in museums, there's an ongoing process where we always go through to take a look at all the works we possibly can whenever they're being gifted to us to make sure there are very few forgeries that make their way in the doors. That so, being so it's the, almost like you have to assume that it might not be real, and it's like, let's prove that it is before we take it. Absolutely. That is uh, one of the working uh, premises of uh, all major international uh, art galleries mm. that uh, basically because of the level and the uh, degree of uh, art forgery that we have to basically go through a thorough comprehensive analysis of all objects and that includes ownership, uh, history, provenance research and uh, also uh, various uh, technical uh, examinations. Uh, Devin, I'm interested. Uh, are there certain artists whose works are more easily forged. Uh, could you, could you, uh, is a Matisse forgery more common than a, a, a Gauguin forgery, for example? Well, those, both those artists work within a period that uh, can be easily forged. It's typically artists in the sort of post-1880 period that are forged the most often. And that's largely because the the mass production of, of oil paints uh, took off during the late 19th century and a lot of those oil paints, uh, their chemical base as it was back then are still the chemical base today. So artists today have their hands on the actual, actual tools and the actual uh, chemical pigments that uh, Matisse or Gauguin used for example. Hmm. I would imagine modern art would be really much easier to forge since often there's not even like an object or a person in it. Uh, very much so, and uh, that's where you get away with not uh, having to um, assess uh, how the artist's hand moves, for example. When you're dealing with old masters, for example, you, who do representational work where you see uh, people uh, depicted, you often are able to assess their brush stroke, what direction their hand is moving, so that way you can uh, cross-check that with, for example, were they right-handed or left-handed. Okay, so uh, you, you sort of explained um, the process here, but how does, how does a gallery, how does an auction house go about uh, proving the authenticity of the painting? Uh, it comes in, you're going to be suspicious, looks like the real thing. Now, what process do you have to go through to determine that it, it, it is in actual fact authentic? Well, there are many steps, and the first step is a uh, visual uh, assessment, and you would take the work out of the frame that it uh, appears in, so you can examine the back, you can examine the front, and you can examine the sides. And then after that, you can use special uh, ultra-red lights or blue lights to examine to see if anything appears underneath the surface, and uh, then you would do a thorough, thorough ownership background to make certain that uh, you can trace the work back over multiple generations and through multiple sales. On top of that, if there are even further questions, that's when you begin the technical analysis of works using such um, processes as X-radiography, infrared reflectography, and um, other than that, um, that's pretty much the standard process before you get into some uh, more scientific practices. Yeah, it sounds just like what I've seen in so many episodes of my favorite TV shows um, with the, the lights and everything. But what happens if a painting is discovered to be a fake? I don't know how often it happens but whether someone spent a lot of money on it or whether it's, it's hanging in your gallery, you know, what do you do? Well, quite frequently, uh, there's not much you can do uh, other than uh, publicly announce that it is a forgery so that the proper authorities can, can uh, begin to uh, inquire as to where it was acquired and who may have produced it. And, uh, for example, at the Art Gallery of Hamilton, we are continuously examining and researching our works to make uh, certain that there are, are not forgeries. Uh, have you accepted given. forgeries? No, we, uh, to date we have uh, not co come across a forgery in our collection through the ongoing research that we conduct. And, and we wouldn't hold it against you because, you know, <laughs> it, it must be very hard to detect sometimes. Uh, yes and no, and it all depends, again, going back to the uh, type of work, uh, the century that it was made in, for example, and 
Other than that, um, contemporary art is pretty much what is forged the most, uh, as I said, because it is the easiest. But uh, when it comes down to it, there's a, a large curatorial committee meeting that goes through and begins to assess it. There's collections that assess it, and we get together. We correspond with colleagues internationally. So it, it's actually quite difficult these days to get a forgery into a gallery. Uh, who's responsible for the uh, modern-day forgeries? Uh, do you have to have a certain skill level or can it be someone for example that might work in an art gallery for 20 years see these pieces of art and say you know what I could forge this and get away with it well it could be a bit of both uh, mark you uh, you could be an incredibly talented egotistical uh, individual who just decides that this is a better way to make money than uh, fight it out on the uh, general art market or two you can have worked in an art gallery for decades and uh, know the ins and outs of the business and uh, how to uh, present yourself to certain individuals, frequently uh, first time uh, buyers and uh, be able to pass off uh, copies that way. So it's, uh, it's, it's complex and it's an ongoing area of investigation for galleries on a day to day basis. Okay, so what advice can you give our viewers if they're interested, if they know of someone that's getting rid of a piece, they just happen to have the money, maybe it's not the priciest, but you know, even cheap artwork can cost you $500 and you just wanna double check you're not getting a piece of junk. What do you advise people? Well, first of all, you would uh, speak to a specialist in the field, and depending on where you live, and for Hamiltonians, for example, or anybody in the greater uh, Toronto Hamilton area, you contact a curator at one of the major art galleries who would then be able to refer you to a specialist or would then provide their uh, expertise themselves. And uh, that would be step one. And uh, other than that, you could also contact auction houses who would bring in specialists to take a look at the work as well if they uh, were interested in taking the work on. Great, that's Devin Terrian. He's the adjunct curator of the European Art at the Art Gallery of Hamilton. Go out and check out the gallery if you haven't been in a while. It's beautiful. It's always fun to do that. Thanks for being on. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Devin. When we come back, Barclays Bank is putting an end to employees dressing down on Fridays. You know, I don't want my financial interest being served by a guy in, you know, a bad Hawaiian t-shirt. <laughs> you know I think people guy. need to let loose after a busy work week. And you know what, Liz, if I want to slip on my favorite pair of hot pink parasukos, <laughs> I should be able to on Fridays. That's coming up next on Square Off. <laughs>